I'm Coach Jay from Pembroke Boxing, and this is Andrew the Golden Boy Burgoyne. Today we've been asked by members of Reddit, uh, their, sub, uh, their subreddit amateur boxing community, to give you some low, give you the lowdown on how to fight against taller boxers who are good at outboxing and staying on the outside. Stay tuned. It's been a little while since I've posted because of all the pandemic. We just started opening it again. We just got back into competition. So everything was super busy, but now we're back to it. Today's one that I've been meaning to do for a little while. Uh, I've done before how to, how to be the aggressive boxer, how to deal with aggressive boxers, machine gun punches. This time we're going to deal with it from the other side. How do you deal with that long, rangy fighter that tries to stay on the outside if you're the shorter, stockier fighter? It's not an easy puzzle to solve, especially if they're good at staying on the outside. Uh, this is going to be more of a tactics video as opposed to a technique video, but uh, we may demonstrate a couple of things as we go along here. So, as you notice, Andrew fights at 147, and he's about 6 foot 1. So he ends up having a height advantage in almost every fight that he's in. That means that he has seen just about every, diff every different kind of attack to try and get inside his very long jab. So the things that will work against a boxer like him, who's mobile, who wants to stay on the outside, uh, the first thing you have to do, and every coach is going to tell you this, is you have to cut off the ring. Outboxers, tall boxers love to operate in space. Don't give them that space. Take it away. You do that by cutting off the ring. If you follow them, which what I mean by that, if Andrew's, if Andrew is, I'm coming forward, and Andrew's moving, I'm just following him right now. And he's got all the room in the world to deal with, and he's probably going to pop me with a few jabs as he, as he moves around. Remember, if you follow him, you will end up circling all night and playing into his hands. So all I'm going to get for chasing him is get punched in the face about a million times. Not super big punches, because they're just jabs, but I'm certainly losing the fight. So what you want to do is when he starts to draw you into that, you want to slide with him. He moves, slide, slide. And you see, every time, I'm advancing just a little bit. Slide. You want to take away that, if you can create the situation where you are fighting in a phone booth, that's what you want. These guys do not like that. They don't want to be in there. They want to get out by any means necessary. And you'll see it in the panic in the rise in the ring. If they want to be on the outside, that's all they want. How much does it bother you when people start cutting you off in the ring? That's a big problem. <laughs> Coming from uh, different points. If you can slide with your opponent, you can keep him in front of you and eventually track him down and trap him against the ropes. So for this next clip, this is Julio Cesar Chavez against Meldrick Taylor. And you'll see Meldrick Taylor wants to stay on the outside. Chavez is actually going to expertly slide with him, cut off the ring, and eventually, as I said, get him trapped against the ropes. So this is the end game. You actually want to be able to crowd your opponent and note the level changes at the end here. We'll talk about that soon. So, a good outboxer, when you reach open class, cutting off the ring is not enough. It's one tactic, and you're taking away some of their space, but every good outboxer has ways to get away from, uh, get away from that kind of pressure and get back to the center of the ring where room to work. Everyone does. And then there's no exception. He'll try, if you're cutting off, he'll try check hooks, boom, and now he's back to the center of the ring. He'll slip in frames when you're punching at him. He slips frames out, and he's gone again. You'll find that outboxers can be very slippery when you try and get them inside. They don't fight well inside, but they do escape very well. If you have a boxer like this, you have to overwhelm them. So you overwhelm them. You cannot get into a one punch for one punch scenario with an outboxer if you're not. Because what's going to happen is he's, he's in his comfort zone. He wants to just throw punches and ones and twos from the outside. That's what he wants. You want to be able to get inside and throw lots of punches. You want to overwhelm his defense and his ability to get out with punches. He can't turn the corner if you're all over. Enough to rush a skilled outboxer. If you rush them, you give them ample opportunities to escape and get back into space. Again, playing so right into their hands. Sliding, so cutting off the ring, head movement, lots of combinations. You've got to be a combination pressure fighter if you're fighting a really good outboxer. And the last thing you need to do is change levels. Because it's very easy as I'm entering, even if I'm entering with a lot of head movement, it's very easy for him to start picking me off as he's backing up the jabs. So I'm trying to slip, but it makes it very hard for me to make that 
for me to make that aggressive push. So I'm sliding with him, I'm not following. And as he's jabbing, I'm changing levels. Change levels, get in. Get inside, then throw them. Change, throw your body in with a shoulder block, whatever you want to do. Keep it. Watch as Chavez goes under Taylor's horizontal punch line, making it easier to escape his retreating jab and effectively move forward. And here, watch him do the same thing to stay at close range and keep crowding him. It's not enough just to crowd and change levels. If you're not throwing punches between level changes, your opponent can escape. Tyson was the master of this. Change levels, then punch, then change levels, then punch and repeat. He was the master of this. One last point, you do not have to have head movement like Tyson to make this work. Simple level changes will do. But it's a combination of those three things that are going to give him nightmares, am I right? Oh, 100%. Anytime that he's had trouble in the ring with somebody who's like that, it's when they combine all three things. Two of them isn't enough, one of them isn't enough. It doesn't matter how good you are at that one. They're easy to escape, there's lots of doors. You, you close those doors, changing levels, aggressive punching, and sliding with them, cutting off the ring to reduce the space that they have to work with. I hope that makes sense to everybody. Uh, if you can, hit subscribe, hit like, and for those of you on Reddit, post your questions below, and I'll answer them as I see them. Train hard. This is, this is, this is, this is, this is,